Go. Hey, what's up, homies? So, so I got another giant box from GearBest.com. This inside here, we got the Anet A6 3D printer. Sorry if my voice is a little gone and hoarse. Uh, I had three of my fighters compete this weekend, and they all won. So I was screaming like a crazy man. Um, but yeah, so I guess let's just open the box and uh, see what see what is all in this thing. I know it's a big DIY kit. This is based off the Prusa i3 design much like my rep rap guru video so you can check that out but uh, there'll be a link in the description too where you can get you guys can get this for even cheaper i'm not quite sure i'll put it on the screen the sale price but i believe the retail price is close to 200 dollars so it's uh you know pretty good this is anet's anet make the a8 and then the a6 is like their fine-tuned version of the A8. The A8 has kind of a lot of a lot of modifications you need to do to it and stuff to make it print good. This one supposedly prints pretty darn good right out of the box. Like and it, there's not that much modification you gotta do to it. Okay, so it looks like it's very well packaged in here. Lots of oh, lots of styrofoam. I think I opened the wrong side. <laughs> so I may have to be really careful. And I think I did, but it seems like everything is fine. This one also, it came with a whole, well not a huge spool, but you know like half a kilogram I'd say. It's about a half size spool of white PLA, so that's cool. I don't currently have white PLA, I only have white ABS. So very, very cool. Uh, there's some wires, these are for connecting the motors, the stepper motors. Uh, it looks like in this box I got a power supply right here. Got a standard power supply. Uh, looks very nice. 120. There's our 110, 220 volt. So you want to make sure you have that if you're in the USA. You want that on 110. So make sure you put that on 110 if you live in the USA. Like myself. If you live in a 220 area, you know, make sure it's 220. Um, uh, the main, the board comes in its own little box. So I like how that's packaged. Usually, most 3D printers they just, you know, they throw it in something like this and just toss it in there. So it's nice how the main board is in its own little box. Here we got the LCD display with the ribbon connectors already on it and everything. So that's all that's all in there. This uh, not quite sure. This looks like part of one of the axes, uh, probably the Y axis or X axis. I don't know. We'll get to that when we get to that. So that's that uh, comes with wire protectors and zip ties. So for wire management, we got standard standard belt, just a standard rubber belt. Um, your SD card this is going to have your files, how to in, the, all the instruction manual and everything on there, so we're going to put that over there on its own. Uh, here is the extruder. The extruder assembly is actually pretty nice. I'm going to open this up just so you can see this. It's uh, quite large. Large and in charge. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the motor is already on it. Most of it's already assembled together. Uh, 0 0.04 Nozzle size or point four nozzle size. It saves like a half an hour just contracting that. Yeah. Uh, here is the the hotbed. So it does have a heated bed, so you will be able to print in your ABS, um, you know, PET G or whatever PETG or whatever, all that other stuff. Here is the other part of the bed. H for hotbed. It's got all the screws and it looks like everything has nice, everything is nice and labeled. So all the different screws have all the labeling. So it'll be very easy to figure this out. Uh, here's the cooling fan, print cooling fan I believe that's what that is. We got our tools so they give you all your Allen wrenches, a screwdriver, as well as a little wrench. Very nice. USB. Uh, duct for the fan, I believe. That's what this is. I'm guessing. Yeah. Well, crap. <laughs> well, we'll get more to that when we get to that. But that's the duct for the fan. Oh, very nice. Comes with its own set of clippers. Sweet. This is uh, the the bearings. Oops. Those okay. Those those things are tough. Very very durable. Uh, some. I don't know what these are, some type of pulley. Uh, they're acrylic. More acrylic pieces. 
Um, and the end stops. These are thermistors for the bed. So another screwdriver. This one, Phillips one. So I give you an extra screwdriver, two screwdrivers. That's cool. The next we got, we still got a lot in here. I bet you this thing out. Oh yeah. So I definitely opened this the wrong side, but oh well. And in here, this is a little acrylic piece uh, on that styrofoam. Oh, nice. Thank you, Blade. More acrylic. Um, the worst thing about this is gonna be taking off all this crap. Like you notice, this stuff is really hard to take off. Uh, yeah, but it's that's gonna be a pain. But yeah, here, uh, here's our smooth rods and our threaded rods for our axes for the Y or the Z axis. Four motors, all labeled X, Y, Z, etc. And lastly all of our acrylic pieces okay so yeah so it's gonna take a little bit so I got a case of beer and I got my brother here to help me and uh, let's just stay up all night and build this thing let's time lapse it Alright guys, we got it all set up, so, yeah, a uh, big wire mess, so we have to, have to use the wire covers and go over that, but, I don't know, we just gotta do the firmware, and it's 3 in the morning, so, we're probably just gonna do the firmware, and then we'll do the first test prints in the morning, which will just be a minute for you guys, so. So far, looks like a success, though. Alright guys, there's been a couple days with this a A6 now, and I got a couple of things printed. Here were those first two test prints I showed you. These were all stock Kara settings, didn't adjust anything besides leveling the bed, and that was pretty much it. Here is the statue G-code. This is was already on the SD card when I got it. Not too bad, a little bit of problems, but overall, you know, pretty smooth for just being stock settings, nothing adjusted. Um, I believe that the PLA I was running, it was just a little hot for it. Same thing with this benchy here. Uh, the retraction settings needed to be adjusted. You can see uh, there's some stringing on it and just, you know, good but not definitely not perfect. So, but anyways, so that was about two days ago. Over the last like 26 hours, I've been printing this fake gun. And this thing turned out awesome. I slowed it down a little bit and I adjusted the layer height. And I uh, changed the, I increased the retraction setting a little, and yeah. But like even like, I got this on Thingiverse. It's a dumb, you know, just a dummy plastic gun. But you know, super super cool. At the gym I work at, it's a um, MMA gym if you if you didn't know. But anyways, the sensei he used to teach all the cops in the area, all the disarms, and he would do classes for the police officers. So I'm gonna have him start doing that. I know I some knife disarms, but I don't really know much gun disarms. So. Yeah, we're gonna start practicing with this. I'm also gonna print out for like a wood one so it can be like that movie the other guys with the wooden gun. But uh, yeah, enough with the gun. Super cool, but the printer itself, out of all the kits I've built, it was probably the best instructions and the least amount of arguing I did with my brother during, during building it. 
every every printer I've had, there's always been some little hiccup or something that wasn't in the directions. This was spot on. There was YouTube videos as well as the SD card had step by step instructions. This retails for about two hundred and twenty dollars. It's on sale with the link in the description for only $179, so that's the cheapest you're going to find it anywhere. And yeah, it's just totally worth it. I also built the RepRap Guru Prusa i3, that was the first 3D printer I built. Very similar style, similar design. This one went together way easier, took way less tinkering with it, um, you know, way, just way less fiddling. I think it took us about, I don't know, five hours or something to build this, which really isn't that bad when you're talking about a DIY printer kit where you got to put together everything. The board. Uh, everything was pretty much on the board. It was just plugging stuff in, which made that extremely easy. Came with all the wire management stuff to just, you know, make it look a little nicer. I still have to put the cover on here, and I'm also going to print a top for a uh, spool holder. Right now, I put the black PLA, PLA, uh, black PLA back on because I'm going to print a black gun too, but I want to make a spool holder that goes on the top, so I don't just have to have one sitting there on the side. But yeah, the great thing about these ANET printers is there's an outrageous amount of support for them. There's so many people that have these on the forums or on Thingiverse. You can just find endless amount of upgrades and just all the knowledge you'll ever need to know about this thing. So I think if you want to build a kit and you're looking at a Cartesian style printer, this is definitely better than that first one I reviewed. Maybe not better. They're totally different. But this one is a lot cheaper. It's like 100. That one retails for 350. This one's like 220. So quite a bit cheaper. I went together smoother and has a lot and a lot a lot more support so if you're looking at a Cartesian style printer kit this is a great option there's also the ANET A8 which is a little cheaper but this one right out of the box supposedly prints a little nicer I haven't got my hands on the ANET A8 yet but hopefully I will in the future so definitely definitely great if you're in the $200 price range and you don't mind building a printer one Great modification I didn't I forgot to mention, especially when I printed this gun that might have cleaned this up a bit. I put a little memory foam bath mat under here. Uh, it's just a $3 bath mat from Walmart and it eliminates a lot of the vibration. And especially if you have multiple printers on the same table, you can put one of these under each one and it'll really eliminate most of the vibration. It'll all be absorbed in this memory foam and not on the table. So definitely great upgrade. And the, I really like the ease of this knob. The only downside is there's this little button here, so make sure when you're turning the knob, you don't accidentally hit the button and restart the printer. So, not really a bad thing I can say about this. I wish it had a glass bed or build tack, but this is my first time printing on this masking tape, and I was pleasantly surprised on how easy it was. And if it gets too stuck to it where you can't get it off the chisel, you can just pull the masking tape up. Sorry about that, that's my clock. I know it's really annoying, and I might be too. So on that note, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys like the printer. I hope you guys like the video. And I'll see you later.